Hi, welcome to this another important video of link tutorial. In this video, we will learn how to implement inner join in multiple data sources. So we will be learning how to implement inner join with multiple data sources and at the last we will figure out which method should be used in query syntax and method syntax. So if you are going to apply inner join then there are two ways. First is query syntax and the second one is the method syntax. So at the end of this video we will figure it out which method should be used, which one is easy as compared to other. Before watching this video I recommend you to watch my part 32 of this link tutorial where we have discussed everything about the inner join for the two tables. If you have watched that part then you can continue from here because in this part we will use the same example which we have already used in the part 32. So let's go directly to our visual studio. So here we have the same example which we have created in the part 32 and now in addition to these two data sources we will have one more data source. So to create a new data source let me add a new class. So go to the project, right click, add and class. Suppose the name of the class is marks. Okay. So this class will have the data of the student marks and this class has few properties. So suppose the first property is ID. The second one is the student ID and the third one is the total marks. So ID is the property of the marks table and the student ID is the ID of the student table which we have in student class. And the third one is the total marks. Now let's go back to the program class and here we will create a data source for this marks table also. So suppose this is our third data source. As per the third data source, the ID of this table is 1, 2 and 3 and the first ID belongs to student ID 1 and the marks for the student 1 is 80. For the student 2, the marks are 90. For student 3, the marks are 95. Suppose for student 4 and 5, we do not have any marks. So in this table, we have only 3 records. Okay. So basically, these 3 students have their marks. And if you notice, uh, for these data sources, student 2 does not have a address because the address ID of the student 2 is 0. So it means in the address table, we do not have any record corresponding to the A2 student. So now as a result, we have only two records which has everything in the common. So first one, because for the record one, we have name. So we have all the data in the first table and the address ID is one. So for the address ID one, we have all the records here in the address table. And in the third table also, for the student ID, we have some record. Okay. Now, we don't have the address for the two so we will skip that and for the student three we have all the records we have everything in the student table we have everything in the address table because of the address id column and if you talk about the third data source then the mapping in the first student data source and the mark data source is based on the student id and the relation in between first students and the address data source is based on the address id so basically something should be common in the data sources so let's implement now so first we will go with the easy one and we will figure it out how this one is easy so we will go with the query syntax first okay and now before selecting the values we will add one more join so we will write here join okay let me remove this space we will write join mark in marks so this is our third data source marks is the third data source and mark is a variable which represent the marks data source now we will write the key okay what key on so here first we have to write the outer data source the outer data source is students and the students is represented by the student so we will write first student dot id so the id of the student table belongs to the student id in the marks table equals mark dot student id that's it 
so now all these three tables are connected and in the select statement let me add one more line so suppose total marks or now the marks are available in the marks data source which is represented by the mark variable and so we will use mark variable to fetch the record from the marks mark dot total marks and that's it if you need to include one more table then similarly you can write here your fourth table as well and then you can directly apply your keys to the other table okay now let me press f5 and let's see what is available in the result set so now we have only two records okay so you can see for the student name a1 it means the first student we have address first line the line 1 and the total marks are 80 for the student 3 we have address line 2 and the total marks are 95 for student 2 we do not have anything in the address table that's why we do not have that record in the output these two records have everything in all the three tables that's why because of the inner join we have these two records in the output now let's do similar thing in the method syntax and uh, and before implementing this thing in the method syntax let me tell you method syntax is little bit hard as compared to the query syntax but we will do everything from the scratch so first First, we have to extract this select logic outside with the help of select statement. How? So, let me cut this part. And so, this is the result set. And in the result set, we will select only these two things: std, comma, address. Okay, that's it. And here, suppose if I am selecting the value, so basically I am modifying few records here. And uh, this std is not available directly because of the x. So x dot std, and we have to change our data like this. So basically, this is the logic for the two data sources only. Okay. The purpose was to extract the select logic outside of the join. We can easily insert our third data source for the join. Okay. So let me add one more join over here. Join. So now you have to write the new data source. What is the new data source? Marks. Okay. And now marks. After the marks, we have to write the outer data source key. What is the outer data source? It is students. Okay. So we will be writing. As you know, we already have written something for the students here in the first join. But now because this second join is out of the scope of the first one. So we have to write the property again okay so suppose the property is student okay and now student dot so you will see because in the first join we are selecting std and address so these two are available as a option now so we have to go deep from the student to std or address so after the student we have two data sources Two, two variables std and address so if we need to go with the first outer data source outer most data source then we have to use std because it is represented for the students dot id and we have so basically you have to go hierarchy by hierarchy okay so this is the outer key and then for the innermost key which is the third one the marks i am writing suppose only m this is represented for the mark marks and uh, m dot student id okay let's focus on the outer key once again so from the first join what is the output we are selecting std and address now we do not have direct access to the students we have std and address so this is the result set and now we are going to apply a join on this result set so we have to go through this result set if we need to go on the first data source okay so if we have written our key and in this key we have two data source in the selection std and address if we need to implement logic on the students then we have to go through the std if we need to implement logic on the addresses then we have to go through the address property here okay and uh, now the selection part so let me write everything in the new line 
comma so the selection what are the keys student comma m so just like the above join we will select a result set here using the new keyword student comma m okay and you can see once we have written the result set here in the second join you will notice that we have some error in the select statement here why let's see why we have this error so if i press x and press dot then you will see after the x we have two properties m and student these are coming from the second join so student or m if i need to select anything from the outermost data source which means the students then we have to go from hierarchy okay what hierarchy then first x then student and then inside this student we have std or address then x std so first x then student then std and then the id so x student dot you can see that we have now std and dot name similarly if you need to find the address then x dot student dot address that's how you can fetch the address okay and now if you need to select the marks also also so suppose i'm fetching total marks for the total marks so marks are available in the m variable so m dot total marks that's it so this is a little bit complex as compared to the query syntax so i will advise you not to use this one because you may get some error because of any syntax at some place you may miss something because there are a lot of hierarchies so suppose we are working with the three data sources then you have to go in the four hierarchy so then first second third and fourth if you are working with the query syntax then you do not have to use anything this kind of complex logic you just have to write simply your join and you can extract your data but ignore that point now let me press f5 and let's see what is the output of this method query so in the method query we have also two records so student one which has address line one and the total marks are 80 for the student third the line is two and the total marks are 95 that's how you can write your logic for the method syntax it is very easy to use in a join in the query syntax so if you are working more than two data sources then i recommend you to use the query syntax or if you are working with two data source then you can use method syntax as well there is no difference in the performance of both of the syntax just this is just the convention how you write your query i hope you have learned a lot from this video if you like this video please subscribe the channel and hit the like button of the video thank you for watching have a great day